Hi everyone, Joy here. I am really struggling to keep a straight face. We have Jason back, part two, and he's, with today we're gonna to talk about your personal consciousness. So this includes sleeping habits, the way that we talk to ourselves, but also most importantly, focus. And uh, so we are back with part two of the series. So this is part two out of four. Um, please go and listen to part one if you have not, because there's a lot of golden nuggets in there. And we just really want to share these success habits with you that you do not learn in college to set you up for success in your personal life and in business. <laughs> Hello, Jason. I'm really sorry. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> okay, let's dive into this. Can you please tell people what is oh. what's on with sleeping habits? Because <laughs> I myself, I'm one of those people that I would sometimes work till two o'clock in the morning, you know, because that's what you do if you have children and do whatever. Is that a good thing or is that not a good thing? Not a good thing. And just like you, you know, as with most entrepreneurs, when you're starting out, you're excited, you're, you're, you're gung ho about it. You got yourself a pair of goggles like this <laughs> and you're ready to go 200 miles an hour. And uh, sometimes you forget to lose track of the important things. And one of those things is sleep. Or maybe you're like me, you and I, Joy, you and I have been up till all hours of the night, either whether it's on my end of the world or your end of the world. Okay. And I know for me personally, once I'm done working that late, I'll go lay in bed and I'll probably be on my phone and I'm checking things or what have you. And before you know it, it's 3.30 or four o'clock in the morning. And uh, it's like, I, I have to get myself to bed here because what happens? Uh, your alarm goes off. You want to get up at six. That was two hours ago. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you feel like absolute garbage and um, it's, it, you won't catch up. That's hard to catch up from during the day. So yeah, you have to make sure that you get to bed at a decent hour, whatever you have to do. And a lot of times it just has to do with, um, you know, poor planning. That's why you're up till three in the morning. You you're, yeah. you're not blocking things out properly to, to give yourself that time. Well, yes and no, because there's only so many hours in a day. And if you're a mama, that's really the only evening hours that you have, though. You see, so that's a problem for a lot of entrepreneurs. So do you have advice on this? Advice on what? How to get to bed earlier? Well, yeah. Like, do you have advice on how you can actually, you know, get yourself... If you say you're not planning proper, is there like a system that, you know, do you have like advice and a system to get to follow and to get into like the mode of going to bed earlier? Yeah. And, and you know what? So today when we were talking about personal consciousness, we were talking mm -hmm. about our sleeping habits, which we're getting into now. We're also mm -hmm. going to be talking about one of the things we're talking about is focusing. Okay. Um, part of that is time blocking. So that would kind okay. of segue into that. Mm -hmm. um, when you get into the habit of really blocking out your time during the day, mm -hmm. um, you, you hold yourself to a subconscious accountability mm -hmm. that you wouldn't realize it was, it was there already. When you are looking at a schedule that you have during the day, mm -hmm. things will fall into place. You'll get a lot more done mm -hmm. during the day, which will inevitably give you the time that you need to get to bed at a decent hour. And I'm not saying you have to go to bed at 7.30 p.m., <laughs> but uh, it's not necessary to be going to bed at at 3 a.m. It's, you're not getting as much done in those mm -hmm. hours as you think you are. So let's, let's dive a little bit more into the sleeping habit thing, because this is something that I'm sure a lot of people are struggling with. So I put entrepreneurship aside, let's say in a personal life, um, say you're not entrepreneur, you're still thinking about it. So it's not yet your thing. Um, I'm just a normal person. I have a job. I'm working from eight to five. I get home. I do whatever I do. I waste my time watching TV or blah, 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 blah. Um, some people go to bed at midnight because they just do, you know, they watch whatever stupid stories on TV, which is really nothing to do with what they should be doing, really, um, my personal opinion. But then um, I've... I've heard a lot of stories that, um, you know, watching TV late till that time, and then you go to bed, uh, you know, is that working on your, your mind when you go to sleep? Does that affect you not having a good sleep? Absolutely. Your reticular activation center in your brain is still firing at all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, when you have that screen in front of your face, um, that's why when you're looking at your phone at night, your, your body's almost like you're, you're tricking your mind thinking, I'm taking in all this information because I should be awake and this is the time to be awake. Mm 
Oh, and it, it's okay. going against what your body is really looking to do, and that's to get some sleep. It's so important. Now, if you have a 12 to, uh, or rather, a 8 to 5 or a 9 to 5 or whatever this is, a lot of your time blocking is automatically done for you at work. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not doing that at work, well, maybe you're being bad at your job at work, too. I, I don't know. That's, that's for you to decide. But um, your work stuff, when you have an 8 to 5, is usually blocked out for you. Now, when you come home, um, if you feel the need to time block what you need to do with your family, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's going to be on a case by case basis. But as far as going to sleep, you, you know, for me personally, I need a good eight hours worth of sleep to feel mm -hmm. rested and, and to be ready to go for the next day. That mm -hmm. might be different for, for somebody else. Yes. That might be different for you, but I can tell you that there's nobody out there that can go to bed at three wake up at six and they're, they're ready to go. And that's, you will break that your body will fall apart. Mm, yeah. I have noticed myself that I can do three nights with little sleep and probably being a mom. I mean, you get trained by your children <laughs> to do this, whether you want to or not. But then after the third night of only averaging three and a half, four hours sleep, I crash. Like my body physically is incapable of just, you know, sure. being like, now I've got another question for you. So is there a certain time of the night that you should be sleeping? Because I've once read an article a wee while ago, I can't even remember when, uh, where you, your best sleeping hours is between, I think it was nine and two o'clock in the morning. Is that a thing? Are you aware of something like that? Because there's something to do with your body and the way, like I can't remember all the whole thing. Um, I, 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 I would love to see that article. I've never heard that, but that, that would that would make sense to me. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of great apps out there right now that you can download and mm -hmm. it will actually listen to you sleep and tell you the best sleep that you're getting throughout the night. Mm -hmm. And some of those apps are free. We can try to put that in the description. But yes. you might want to take a look at that and, and see what your best sleeping patterns are for you. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it, it really all comes down to giving your body a chance. So like when you go to sleep, like don't bring your phone with you give yourself a chance to actually rest and get into that, yeah. that REM sleep that is so critical to, you know, thriving on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. And you're definitely more productive. Like I've noticed like last night I had a, <clears throat> a very good sleep, the first one in like weeks really. And um, it, it, I feel like this morning and I was up early and I was, I worked for an hour before I even got the kids out of bed. It's, it's really, it, it really helps. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, there's nothing better than, than getting up, you know, like 6.30, 7, and you start the day, your day's blocked out time-wise of things you're going to do, and come yeah. 11 o'clock, you're, you know, you're four or five hours into the day already, and you look how much you got done, you know, mm -hmm. and you still have the rest of the day, and as mm -hmm. you knock things off a to-do list or what have you that we'll talk about, mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's uh, room opens up for other things that you might have wanted to get done tomorrow, or or what have you. And then it now time opens up for your family and time opens up for you to get to bed at a, at a decent hour. So you can, so you can do it again tomorrow. It's, it's really important. Mm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And you're less grumpy. <laughs> and you're less grumpy. Well, hopefully. <laughs> but at the same token, so, yeah, you know, sleeping habits can also, we can talk about waking up habits. Ah, uh, yes. So if we're getting, if we're getting to bed at a decent hour, mm -hmm. You know, we can wake up at a decent hour and when we're starting the day at 7 a.m. and we're refreshed and we're good to go instead of, you know, we stayed up at three, we're automatically sleeping until 11 or we might have had to get up early because we have kids and now it's even worse. Yeah. Uh, it's good to start the day early. You know, mm -hmm. we've talked about doing stretches and stuff like that in the, in the previous episode, how we should prime, <laughs> prime ourselves to get ready for the day. Uh, it's probably good to start doing that at around seven o'clock in the morning, then at noon. Yeah, no, definitely. So they're, they're, they're critically important. And it's things, it's these little things like this that are overlooked. Yes. That make a huge difference. And that, and that's the purpose of uh, our spending time on this um, things that they don't teach you in college. Yeah. That's exactly it. And for the parents listening to the podcast or those looking at listening to this vlog, um, if you, because my kids are awake at half six, so, you know, there's no time for me to do anything before then, you know, except if I wake up at five, which is then good. But um, for waking up exercises, do the priming with your children. <laughs> it's actually fun. I enjoy it. <laughs> Get them involved and I guarantee yeah. they'll have the energy to do it. 
<laughs> well, the problem is you don't want to over-energize your children, right? Because <laughs> they're already full of energy <laughs> and beans. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's go a little bit and talking the way that you talk to yourself. So this is habit number two from this episode, um, which yeah. is part two. So if you're only joining now, please go and watch part one as well on YouTube. So what is then your the way that you talk to yourself. So I can't say to myself in the morning, your, your hair is a bit like my mess today on my head. Um, but I'm not allowed to say that, right? Or can I say to myself, gee, whiskers, it looks like there's a bird here nesting in there somewhere. Is that hey, not allowed? If it's true, then it's true. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's like, uh, you know, don't go sit out in the, in the weeds and say there's no weeds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not, not going to help. But how we talk to ourselves on a daily basis is so important and it's something that so many of us overlook. And, you know, how many people wake up in the morning and their alarm clock goes off and they think to themselves already, oh, here we go. Another shit day coming down the alley. So you know? sad, though. yeah. And then they're surprised when a, they're getting dressed and a button flies off and it kills the bird and... <laughs> <laughs> you know they can't get they can't get their day back at all because you know they're all they're saying to themselves as the day progresses is this sucks i suck at this thing called life and i don't yeah and it's never going to get better so why are you surprised when when it does it i mean exactly. if i tell you joy god i am absolutely terrible with names terrible with names are you going to be shocked when I can't remember yours next week? No, because you no. tell yourself that you're terrible with names and you're not going to remember. That's right, because our mind has two parts. We have a conscious mind and we have a subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. a conscious, our conscious minds set our goals. Mm -hmm. Our conscious mind seeks those goals out 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It's Correct. just like when, um, you know, if I'm telling you, oh man, I heard this band uh, yesterday. Uh, what the hell was the name of that band? I can't remember, but I wanted to tell you about it, but I can't remember. I, I'll get back to you on it. And then what happened? Seven hours later, you remember the name and it could be, uh, you could be anywhere. You could be outside in the, in the garden. You could be at the grocery store and you remember, damn it, that's the name of that band. Well, when you, when I said to you, I saw this band and I want to tell you about it. I was setting the goal with my conscious mind of letting you know about that band. Oh, yes. <laughs> Even though I couldn't remember it at that time, my subconscious mind heard, I need to remember that name. And it got to work on it immediately. And it didn't stop until it arrived at the answer. Yes. It's the same thing. It, it, it is you really setting yourself up for what you want and what you're going to receive during the day. You know, people say, I need to turn this day around after they've, got into a car accident and they their wipers flew off the car and all the cereal spilt in the kitchen. I, I got to turn this this day around. How am I going to turn this shit day around? Well, you're already, you're already telling yourself that it's a shit day. Mm -hmm. So everything that's coming after that doesn't matter. Turning your day around is watching how you talk to yourself and the messages and the goals that you're giving your subconscious mind to uh, to track into every day. So that's I have a morning like that where I like I blend something and I forgot to put a lid on and it's a big spill and then I forgot to put the the you know the nozzle of the the coffee machine into the pot the coffee thing and the coffee spills everywhere and the kids make a mess and blah blah blah. So I have a morning like that and I just smile through all of it. But then I reach a point and this actually happened to me and I reach a point where I'm like, damn it, I've been positive all morning but now I'm losing my shit. What do you do then? How do you then, I mean, then you're patient with all these things happening in the row. You're smiling and waving at all of it, but then you just reach a point where you're like, ah, what do you do then? <laughs> How do you talk to yourself then? Well, being positive, you know, positive thinking, positive thinking, that, <laughs> that only gets you so far through the storm, right? At some point, you do have to change the way you're thinking, yes. like for real. So, okay. you know, in a case, in a case like that where, now your kitchen is absolutely destroyed at the hands of you and your children. Um, <laughs> it's okay to maybe sit down and take a second and reset. Reset your mind. Reset what you're telling yourself and look at the day ahead and mm -hmm. decide for yourself with a reset mind how the rest of this day is going to go. So how do you reset your mind? Sit down. Take two minutes. 
Mm -hmm. Take two minutes, think about everything that's been going wrong this morning mm -hmm. and how that's going to stop now. Ah. And now we're going to adopt some new laws and some new goals <laughs> for our conscious mind to take on. And, and it's, 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 just, <laughs> it's just as simple as that. It's not, oh, I'm going to kill these kids when I'm happy. That's not, that's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta really, you really gotta pay attention to how the things that you're saying to to yourself and your brain, because I guarantee you, you will be surprised. You're bringing on 99% of the garbage um, that's in your life. You're inviting it right in. Yes, and I agree with you. But you, know, you know me. We've we've been friends for a wee while now, and um, you know, I'm always, I've always got a positive view and a positive, you know, thought process throughout the day. Even um, a lot of people don't have that, and I must say, it, it. I've always been a positive person, but you get times during the day where you just feel like, oh, this is just difficult, or oh, can my computer just stop freezing, or whatever that thing is. Do you have a hack that we can like tell the audience, like, what do you do, except for just having a moment and keeping quiet and just resetting your mind? Is there something else that people can use where, like, you're trying your old, utmost best to just stay positive and be in the right frame of mind and, you know, doing all the things, but freaking hell life just happens and you get days like those how do you get past that you pull the rose out of the bucket of shit <laughs> nice okay i like it <laughs> and so what i mean by that is look for the positive and the garbage yes. that is going on yes. there's some so sort of a lesson there's something mm -hmm. positive you can pull yes. from all this garbage that's happening to you. I guarantee for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. For every negative, there is a positive. Mm -hmm. um, get in the habit of finding that, well, I'm not, going to, uh, I'm not going to drink orange juice near my computer anymore. I spilt it all in my keyboard and my computer doesn't like that. <laughs> now I know I'm not, going to, I'm not going to drink orange juice near my computer anymore. I mean, yeah. that's a little bit simplified, but pull the positives out of the shit that's happening. Yes. Well, I'm not, well, here's what I learned from that. You know, my friend gypped me. He got me involved in some kind of a uh, investment that went horribly wrong. And now I'm pissed. But now I know uh, to be more careful next time. And I probably want to get involved with friends on that level next time. Yes. And so now there's the positive mm -hmm. moving forward mm -hmm. and uh, with a fresh, fresh look at it. Yes, I completely agree with you. And that's exactly what I do. I always look at like what's wrong and then immediately how I can rectify that, you know, with a positive thought. Like if my mouse doesn't work, it's like, well, it doesn't work. Let's put batteries in it. That's the, you know, the, you know, the solution to it. Okay. I, that's simple, but you know, that's kind of the concept. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, but you know, it's those, when things, when you, when you let things build up, yes. it's little things like the, the battery ran out or the, the ink went out in my pen yes. that could cause you to completely just lose it <laughs> because that was the that's all it took right there for you to come crumbling down but you then it's underlining issues though because that's not a normal thing to crumble down and your ink runs out of your pen no <laughs> no it's not that's so i can tell you probably how you're talking to yourself throughout the day yes you know i can see how you're handling problems and hiccups along the way not so much you're burying them inside um and and i just don't want to see that or look at that out of sight out of mind until one day your pen runs out of ink life destroyed yeah and then you need to walk around with these all day because <laughs> you just don't trust anybody or anything <laughs> and now look at you <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I learned something the other day and it was basically you get when you're in a relationship with somebody there's two types of people you get a person that is a rhino that just storms <laughs> and then you get the other person that is a porcupine that is it a porcupine with the spikes that comes out um, yeah yeah <laughs> So basically what happens, the rhino, when somebody says something, they just storm and they just pissed off immediately and they just, you know, have an argument where the porcupine comes in his shell and it's fucked. So if you go close, you're going to get prickled. So it just feels like sometimes when you just listening to you talking about, you know, how you set yourself up for the day, it makes me think like that because some people will immediately just get pissed off and just storm into a bad mood and that's the end of the day. And other people will, might, you know, so like 
climb into their shell and just put spikes. So if I try to talk to you like that, you know, like you, know, like you <laughs> retaliate. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. It just makes me think of that. So, but yeah, well, you know what, no matter, there's all different types of people out there and, you know, mm -hmm. people have, people have become who they are through a set of values and way that they have been speaking to themselves for years. Um, but the good news is that, you know, anybody can really take a look at some simple things going on in their life and begin to change. Your, your, your relationship doesn't have to be doomed because one of you's a rhino and one of you's a porcupine. Even the porcupine can learn how to be a rhino maybe a little bit and they can uh, see eye to eye or, or what have you, but it's never too late for anybody. Yes. That, that's the point. It's, mm -hmm. it's always the perfect time to start learning. Yes. Always. The more clarity that we have as we go along our day, definitely better. It's better for us. It's better for the people around us. Yes. And it's better for our overall um, outlook on life and our overall mental health as we go through this thing called life. Yeah, no, that's very true. It's a, valid, a very valid point. Uh, because you set yourself up for success. And if you're going to start your day, by the way, you talk to yourself. You, it's just, you're never going to get to success ever, you know, with that attitude. Okay. Well, Let's talk about focus. So we just, just touched on it when we started with sleeping habits. So yeah. what is the number three in this episode? So by the way, guys, um, please subscribe and hit the bell button. So you do, you know, get notified for part three of this series. So this is part two, and this is about personal con um, consciousness and the way you talk to yourself, sleeping habits, and then focus. So let's go into focus, Jason. So what is the, what is the focus thing that we need to do to help us to be successful? So focusing really means, um, we're focusing our energy and our time on high payoff activities, um, preferably right in the beginning of the day when we get up at not noon, uh, yes. but yes. at around 7.30. And so for me personally, what I do and what I've done for a long time, mm -hmm. I keep an Excel sheet. Like this is what works for me. I keep an Excel sheet. I have three tabs. I have a personal tab, a personal sheet. Mm -hmm. I have a business sheet. Mm -hmm. And then I have a miscellaneous sheet. Mm -hmm. And so, oh, and then I have an invoice, an invoice sheet as well. So I keep track of my whole life right there. It's like a running to do list. And across at the top, I have the date that I started it, the date I expect myself to complete it by, um, a date that I did complete it by, if so applicable, and then notes with dates of anything that I do for that particular uh, project. So yes. on the 20th of March, I did this and this towards this particular. Yes item you know what I mean and it's just a way for me to track mm -hmm. um, what I'm doing but at the same time on Sundays I do make a weekly to-do list for myself for the week okay okay and so it's really important and I time block those out so mm -hmm. in the morning I'll dedicate an hour to um, items that come up on my web page that I need to fix okay um, and then for the next hour after that, it'll be something, maybe a project having to do with, say, uh, um, something like this, getting ready for um, uh, an interview or, or something like this. But that time is already blocked out for the week. Mm -hmm. So I have no surprises. But if anything does come up, yes. I know where I can fit it in. Like maybe I've gotten part of this day done yesterday because it went really well. Mm -hmm. And it just... It's a way where you don't become so overwhelmed with all the intricacies that are involved, especially when you're starting a business. Exactly. And it's a way for you to not get scrambled and come apart when your pen runs out of ink. So focusing on your high payoff activities in the morning, mm -hmm. having your week set in advance, mm -hmm. and a calendar. Like, Joy, you know, we've had to share ca uh, calendars between you and I, when we want to work on something, and even though we're in different time zones, it's as easy as sharing like a Google calendar and I can go look on yours and yeah. book something in with you or whatever. And it just makes, it makes life that much easier, yes. especially now when you're, you're collaborating or coordinating with other people, which mm -hmm. ultimately always has to happen when you're, when you're starting a business. So yes. having that focus and, and, and that consciousness about you on what your day looks like and what's coming up in the coming days is just hugely important. 
Yes, no, I agree with you. So when you say highly paid activities, what would that be? What is that, that activity that you need to start your day with? Yep, so high payoff activities would be activities that are usually directly related to you bringing in income. At mm -hmm. least that's what they are for me. So yes. I have, so for the coaching, that's me looking at and getting back to people that want to talk about setting up appointments yes. or talking about a past appointment. Um, or something having to do with maybe an invoicing issue. Yes. Um, those activities I take care of right in the beginning, getting back to clients as it is, as you know, especially yeah. when, you're, when you're just starting in a business, mm -hmm. you're getting back to people immediately because you have to be known as somebody that can do that. That's right. directly related to you bringing in money. Yes. So those things I take care of for, first. I have a couple of other things that I do outside of coaching, mm -hmm. um, that always require my attention first thing in the morning um, when certain markets open up. Yes. And so those things, they have to be done first. Yes. High payoff activities directly related to bringing in income after that. And then I move more into, you know, things like I talked about, you got to fix issues on my website. These are indirect, um, indirect activities that are not necessarily related to bringing in income, but they're indirectly related but those can come later on in the day. Yeah. If that makes sense. It makes hundred percent sense. So the system that I'm working on, I actually learned this when I did the IFA challenge from the, one of the coaches, Stephen Larson. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he has a, and I've been implementing it for the last year. And it's so, so awesome. Where you use the, he calls it the red dot, green dot system or something like that. So you've got red dots, green dots, and yellow dots. So you, your red dots is things that you need to do in your business, but you don't need to do them yourself. It's like accounting and, you know, setting up a website, things like that. You don't need to do it yourself. Exactly. You send those tasks to somebody else, but it's stuff that you need in your business, right? But it does not relate to bringing in income. Then your yellow dot links to a green dot, which, you know, you have to do a Facebook post or, a, you know, this podcast episode, that is, that is a yellow dot that it can potentially lead to income, but it's not a direct income link where if you speak to a customer or you have an appointment that is then, you know, like I say, a direct green dot. Um, so yes, I completely agree with you on that. And I found myself also, and I'm sure people can relate to this way. Um, you know, I'm okay to do a red dot thing in the evening. You know, if I, you know, like working on my website, because I like to do those things myself, but it's something that I don't need a lot of brain power for. So I just do it at night because it's fun. I love it. And it relaxes me. I know it's weird, but it does. <laughs> um, so just in saying that, so say you're working like from eight to five, with that thing then that you don't really need in your business, would you leave that then for the end of the day type thing to do? If I understand the question right, with high payoff activities, if you're looking to, if you're just starting out and you also have, so now you have your eight to five no. and you're building your business, I, no. I guess I guess. <laughs> so you already have your business. So imagine you've already got your business. Also, it's a Saturday. You're working full time, but you're working on a Saturday on your own business. So you start off the day, maybe talking to people, finding people, whatever you need to do in your business. So that's a green dot. Okay, fresh and early, your brain is awake. Um, and then towards the end of the day, is the is the good idea then to do a red dot as in a thing that you don't need directly in your business? Is that something you do towards the end of the day, or do you mix the tasks up, or what is your recommendation as far as those type of things goes? You know, it's funny because I never heard of this red dot, green dot, yellow dot. Uh, well, just use it as I, something that you don't need to. We're essentially saying the same thing, but I never heard it as the dots. <laughs> and so, I mean, I would say, you know, the reason that I like to do the, the high payoff activities first in the morning is because yeah. one, they're really important. And you, you, these are the times where you usually have to get back to people or, or what have you. But yes. the morning is the time when sometimes you have the most energy. The day has started, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's cyclical. And as we get closer to the evening, this is the natural wind down time for our bodies and for life and for it's, it's all connected, you know what I mean? Right. And so I, I'm like you as well, you know, I, when you're starting a business and you're really excited about it and, and into it, you know, you could probably, there's activities that you're going to do that that's just exciting because you're, right. you're getting things done, you know what I mean? So yeah, I would say whatever your red dot activity is, you want to jump into a red dot at night, you know, <laughs> knock yourself out. But it's, it's, it's that time in the morning yeah. um, when the things need to be done that mm -hmm. require your most critical thinking mm -hmm. and, and, and your sharpest uh, uh, attention mm. detail. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
that's when you that's what the mornings are for 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 me and i i definitely recommend it so any other tips on being focused um time blocking mm -hmm. watch how we talk to ourselves um planning out the, the I can't stress enough the, 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 the time blocking and the planning things out, you know, especially when you're starting a business and there seems like there's a million things that need to be done. Mm -hmm. Everything from, you know, you got your website stuff going on, you're bringing in leads, you're trying to make, trying to, uh, you know, show everybody that you're an authority on this subject that you know so much that there's so much shit that needs to be done that if you're not blocking that out and you're just haphazardly going from, one to the other to the other, things get missed and things get left out. And being an entrepreneur, especially online, it is, there's, there's a lot of us out there, mm. right? But there isn't a lot of us out there that do it the right way. <laughs> that's and true. that separates, that, that's what yeah. makes somebody successful or not. Mm. A lot of people out there going all over the place, no time, no rhythm or rhyme or anything out and 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 the system will weed those people out yes. people that do it right and do these things like we're talking about these are the folks that are going to make it in in that crazy ocean out there of entrepreneurship yeah yeah the red ocean where everybody's swimming in the red ocean <laughs> that's awesome thank you jason so guys this was part two of three uh, sorry part two of four and uh, like i said this is called the success habits that you do not learn in college <laughs> and jason with his goggles so if you're listening to this on audio please do yourself a favor and pop onto youtube so you can experience the goggle i want to call him the goggle man but i rather not there because <laughs> i'll get into trouble with him <laughs> you see the face <laughs> that's all i need is to be working on all this stuff for so hard for so long and then in two weeks be known as the goggle man <laughs> you won't be all right thank you so much Jess. i appreciate your time um, fun, you. as, fun as you. always and definitely a lot of golden nuggets please don't forget to subscribe to this uh, to this episode and uh, to the channel and also to hit the bell button so you can get not notified of the next episodes coming up awesome thanks so much awesome. Thank you, Jace. We'll talk again soon. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.